All right, so we're getting into trend lines. Now, a trend line is also called a regression line. Uh, it's also called a linear model. All of these things, so uh, trend line, regression line, linear model, they all mean the same thing. So the trend line is this piece here, right, the actual line. And this equation goes along with that line. So when they refer to a linear model, they're talking about the equation of the trend line. That's what we're talking about here. So you can see we have the scatter plot, but you can't really use a scatter plot to do anything to predict uh, the future. But we can use a trend line in the midst of a scatter plot to do that. So this is the graphic we're going to use um, to go ahead and answer some questions. So find 224.85 on the Y, or the vertical axis, which is roughly here. And what happens at that point? Well, that is the start of the trend line. All right? We also would call this the Y intercept, because it's where it crosses the Y axis. And where does this value appear in the equation? All by itself, right? It's at the end by itself. Again, I'm going to use the term y-intercept. The linear model begins, here's the linear model, begins with 0.246x. This means that CPI is increasing 0.246, which is about a quarter, right? 0.25 is a quarter, for each month x after January 2011. Because if we would put that 0.246 over 1, the top represents the CPI, because that's the y-axis, and the bottom represents the months after January 2011, because that's the x-axis. That's where that comes from. What CPI value does the model predict for January of 2011? Well, remember, January 2011 is the starting point. That means it has an x value of 0. So if I would plug 0 in for x, well, when you multiply by 0, this is just 0. So 0 plus 224.85, the model predicts 224.85 as the CPI value for 2011. But notice, that's not the actual value. That's what the model predicts. So thinking through that, how would we use uh, the linear model to calculate an estimated value for February of 2011? Well, February of 11 is one month later. So we would simply plug in 1 for x. Okay, well when you take, that just gives you 0 0.246 plus uh, 224.85, which means it would predict, uh, where's this at, 225.096. And that is the estimation for February 2011. Now let's use the equation to estimate the CPI in January of 2016. Okay, so think about it. January of 16 is five years later. There are 12 months in a year, so that gives me 60 months later. So x is 60. So I take my equation, y equals 0.246 times 60 plus 224.85. I multiply by 60 first and get 14.76. And then I add 224.85, add those together, and we would approximate uh, January of 2016 being 239.61, which would be here. Locate the dot that represents the actual CPI value for January of 16. So that dot is here. The actual CPI was 236. Okay, so the actual is 236. We just said the estimate was 239.61. The estimate is the line just slightly above that. So the actual does not fall exactly on the trend line, nor should it. I mean, it could. It's possible that it could. But remember that the linear model is an estimate. We are giving an estimate, and that is the key here. It should be close. But it's never going to be, well, it sh it's probably never going to be exact. It's just going to be close. And that's the goal. We want to be somewhere in the neighborhood. The stronger the relationship, the closer the trend line will be to the actual values. Now, the scope of the model refers to the range of values of the independent variable. 
It is not recommended that the model be used to estimate values far outside the scope. All right, so when you look at this, the scope ends here, right? It said 64 data points. So, and that actually, if this is 60, 1, 2, 3, but then we have this one. So the scope of the model goes from 0 to 63, because that's 64 data points, which is January of 11 to April of 16. That's the scope because that is the values that we have of our, X, of our independent variable. So would it make sense to estimate the CPI in the year 2030 from this set of data? And the answer is no. 2030 is 19 years after. If you multiply that by 12 months in a year, that's 228 months after January 2011. The scope ends, the scope ends at 63. So we might estimate out to 70, but anything past 70 is just way too far outside the scope of the model. Too many things can change that could impact this, that could impact the relationship between these two variables. And therefore, no, 2030 is way too far outside the scope of this model.